hello, everybody. Alexis Yunus here with Nate Saunders once again. And Nate, I know we've been trying to, to, to map out some sort of a plan where we could get a Formula One season. And it seems like today there is news that takes us that much further. So we're hearing of possibly a start in Austria and a finish in December. So what's the, what's the latest? What are all the details? Yeah, so today we've probably had the most clear statement from F1 boss Chase Carey that we've had throughout this whole thing. So this morning, uh, Monday morning, we had the French Grand Prix was cancelled. The British Grand Prix confirmed that any race they do in July will have to be behind closed doors. They sent a, an email around to all of the people that have bought tickets already. And then that was followed up by Kerry kind of giving this statement, this update really on the status of the season. And there was some interesting wording in that. He said that uh, Formula One's increasingly confident was the phrase he used in starting the season at some point in the summer in Europe. Now, the provisional date they're looking at is uh, July the 5th and the Austrian Grand Prix. Now, like with the British Grand Prix, any race they have there would have to be behind closed doors. The statement that Kerry released was very clear on that fact that the early races in this provisional calendar, they're kind of, I guess, throwing together as we speak right now because it's so up in the air about how all these countries are going to be. Um, the, the opening races, at the very least, will be behind closed doors. So that would be um, no spectators, very limited media, and the race teams themselves would be basically at the bare minimum they would need to to function at a race because there's a lot of staff that you don't need if, if a lot of other things are happening. So, again, it's very, very important to say that this is there's no confirmation behind this at all. It's very much Formula One trying to be quite proactive. I actually quite like what Formula One's been doing recently where they're saying we're not ruling anything out, but we're also... Here are all the options that we're discussing. So they're keeping them. They're keeping their options open, um, but things could change. You know, we've seen things change just in the UK over the past few months, few weeks. So all of this hinges on how a lot of things play out over the next couple of weeks. And in terms of specifics, how many races are we looking at? Where are we looking to finish? You know, is it still going to be like Abu Dhabi? What are we? What are What are they thinking? Yeah. So th- th- this was the most detail that we've had from anything. So um, what Kerry said was that the plan would be to kind of, I guess, follow the bare bones of what would have been the 2022 calendar. So it would be Europe in July, August, September. The key there being racing through August. We obviously won't have the summer break, which was brought forward. So teams are already in that shutdown period. Usually they would be in the summer break in August. So as, as Chase Carey said, they'll try and fit as many races in Europe through that spell. So we'll be racing throughout August, which we haven't done um, in, in the era that there's been a summer break. Uh, and then Eurasia, Asia and the Americas through late September, October and November. So that again follows pretty much what the season would have looked like. You'd imagine the Chinese Grand Prix would end up in there somewhere. Uh, maybe Vietnam as well, if they can if they can get that over the line, because that was meant to have its first race this year, of course. And then the season, we, we heard talk of it extending into January next year, but with this plan, again, as a best-case scenario, they want to finish in December. So you'd have Bahrain, and then the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix would still finish the season in December. So a bit later than we would have been expecting normally. And Kerry said between 15 and 18 races. So to, to secure that, they're going to have to have multiple races at some weekends. So they're not talking about having eight standalone race, uh, 18 standalone races. They're very much saying we'll have 18 events, in as many places we can have them, you know, until then. So it's important. That's that. That's very much the the asterisk that you need to apply to all of this. Is when they say eighteen events, they're not talking about eighteen different weekends where you go to eighteen different places. It's very much they'll get eighteen events in as many places as they can possibly get. They need to race uh, in eight countries across three continents for it to be an official championship season. So that's the bare minimum they're aiming for. Um, but yeah, it, it, it by the sounds of it, it'll be quite manic if they get that over the line. And I'm just thinking about manic. I mean, I hate to, to be a downer on certain things, but I know we touched on this probably like a week or two ago when I was saying, you know, the Premier League sort of in football faced the problem of the fact that even though it's behind closed doors, that means, okay, no fans. But there's, we're still talking about hundreds of people being involved that will have to be tested, have to be given the all clear medical personnel, which means, you know, you're probably depriving hospitals of you know their own medical personnel during this pandemic um do you see this affecting it at all because it is really something to consider and i know you know the numbers that it takes to put on formula one race weekends yeah so i've been asking around with different teams in terms of the numbers that actually need to take to a race like this you know if you're talking about scale down operations so i'll use haas you know our friends uh, our american friends um their numbers that they gave me was that at a normal race they would have 60 operational staff just based on the operation of the car, so you're talking mechanics, engineers, etc., that that doesn't include marketing, comms teams, you know, the, the people that look after the guests there, the catering teams, etc. Um, obviously, that side of it would be massively scaled down 
in this event, but you still need a catering team there if you've got 60 staff. I think Gunther Steiner, the team boss, said that in a behind-closed-door race, they could take between 40 and 60, so they've clearly identified some members of the race team even that maybe they could do without. Maybe they double up on jobs like that. But even if you take 40 and you times that by 10, there's obviously 10 teams, all the bigger teams as well have you know, much more people involved. Just the teams alone, you're talking 400 people minimum. And then you think about Formula One has to bring people. You have the FIA. They'll have Michael Massey, who is the race director. He has to be at an event. He will have a team of people there who will, you know, if, if we saw in Baku last year when the circuit started to fall apart, the drains kept coming out in the circuit. The FIA has a team of people that go down there to inspect those things. They have to be at a race to ensure that safety, if anything else was to happen. You also have marshals at each circuit. You think there's multiple marshals at each corner of a circuit. So the more you unravel this, like you said with football, the more people you see. And again, with Formula One, you need you also need the same medical provisions that you need um, at any other race. You know, you need to know there's an ambulance. You need to know that you know you've got good access to a local ICU, etc. So there are a lot of things here. So you're talking way upwards of 500 people to take to one place. The benefit of Austria is it's in a very remote part of Austria. The the, the Red Bull Ring is just outside Spielberg, and the consensus the, the census there says that it's uh, 5,000 people. Um, so I guess there's less less risk of you know a, a lot of people being in one place. Silverstone again is in quite a remote part of the country as well. I'm not sure how much that changes things because the key is I guess you've got to test everyone. Um, yeah. So again, there's so many question marks to this, and there's so many people that would need to be tested. It's very much going to be the closer we get, the more we see of this. But a big question will be for Formula One if key workers in the UK haven't been tested by by July. Is it right that those tests would go on Formula One staff just to put a race on. I don't think that would be morally the right thing to do. And I'm sure teams wouldn't agree with that either. So there's there's, there's really simple questions like that that really need to be answered before we even consider whether we're going to have a race or not. You know, there's so many things. It's like a moving target, as always, which makes it interesting for us, I guess, but also frustrating because we don't know when any of this is going to start. Exactly. Well, Nate Saunders, thank you so much for chatting with us. Easier said than done. That is just resuming to any sort of normal life, really applies to everything outside of Formula One. But as you say, props to them for, you know, constantly being proactive and, and developing plans as this goes along. Thanks so much, Nate. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content plus live streaming, make sure to subscribe to ESPN Player.